Hello, golf fans. I'm Chris Jarrell. I'm here for RotoPros.com. We're doing my weekly BFS PGA breakdown. Before we get into that, if you're not a RotoPros member yet, make sure to get over to RotoPros.com. Click on the right top right-hand corner sign up button and get your free trial today to check out everything that we have to offer. We cover NHL, NBA, PGA, NASCAR, MLB starts this week, so we got a lot of content coming out for that NFL season when that rolls around again. We cover soccer. Um, that covers the Champions League as well as the English Premier League. Um, we got a lot to offer. We got premium articles. We've got live shows. We've got one-on-one -on -one coaching. We got a ton going on in our community chat. Um, that's where everything goes down. Um, so come over to rollerpose.com. Check us out today. With that, let's jump into this week's picks. This week, the PGA Tour heads to Austin Country Club in Austin, Texas for the WGC Dell match play. For DFS, it's a completely different setup this week. I'm not going to be covering um, the Corrales tournament uh, with the weaker field. I've really been concentrating on the Dell match play here. As you can see, I've built a bracket into my cheat sheet this week. I'm going to kind of go over some strategies in this video, uh, how to attack this it's only the second year they've had this style of dfs on DraftKings for the dell match play so um, we don't have a whole lot of data of what what happened in the past but i definitely got some strategies that are going to set you ahead um, of some of the field especially maybe in some of the lower buy-in tournaments this week so first of all we've got 64 players they are in 16 different groups of four players so what will happen the tournament actually starts wednesday so keep that in mind when you're building your lineups that everything starts tomorrow morning not thursday mornings so you need to get your lineups in earlier what they're going to do is uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, each player in the group, so for instance, Dustin Johnson is going to play on Wednesday, say, um, I don't have the schedule in front of me, but say Matsuyama, Grace, and Reavy um, in the first three days. So you play each player in your group once, and then whoever wins that group comes out into the round of 16. So as you can see here, I've got um, one just kind of drawn up. So I've got Dustin Johnson coming out of that group. Uh, Sergio Garcia coming out of that group and then it's just a bracket style losing your out so as you can see Saturday morning is going to be the round of 16 Saturday afternoon will be the elite eight and then Sunday we're going to have the semifinals uh, in the morning and then the final will be 18 holes in the afternoon so I do have the regular cheat sheet here and what I've also done this week is I've set it up um, for group numbers so if you want to make your own and maybe sort the sheet in a different way to help you do your research go up to file when you download a copy of the cheat sheet click make a copy name it whatever you'd like here and click OK it's going to open up another version of the cheat sheet this time it will be editable for you um, so what I've done just to make it a little bit easier when looking at your first groupings is I've sorted the sheet by group number so you can see all four players in a group as you go down the list so you can just easily compare uh, form history stats I've also moved things a little bit this week right up against the player information is going to be the course history and current form and then the DK to odds differential and then we've got the raw stats in green and then I've taken those raw stats and ranked them in the orange this allows me to build a model as you can see here I'm looking at a pretty simple model this week uh, strokes game ball striking a little bit off the tee this is a peak die course so a lot of emphasis on placing the ball off the tee so that you can get a shot at these greens um, par 5 scoring big here at this course going to want to score there and then birdie your better percentage generally the guys that are making the most birdies are going to be winning holes um, I don't care if a guy has a blow up hole and gets a 10 or a 12 doesn't really matter he's just going to lose that hole um, but he will the guys that do he'll cut if he turns around and makes a birdie the next time he, he can win a hole and then he's positive points for you so uh, pretty simple this week um, when it comes to the stats model the next thing we're going to look at here before talking about some picks and some strategies is looking at the scoring because it's completely different this week so as I see it did not show up here so I'll just bring it up on DraftKings so you can see is for the rules and scoring here We've got three points for a whole one, um, three quarters of a point for a whole halved, three quarters of a point lost. If you lose a hole, if you don't, holes not played, we'll talk about that in a second. If you win the match, you get five points. If you have the match, you get two points. That can only happen in the group stages, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. After that, they would play extra holes, and that scoring does count um, to your score when we get into the round of 16 and so on. If you go three consecutive holes one, you get a bonus of five points. And if you don't lose a hole in your entire match, um, you will get seven and a half points. The hole's not played. So if a player wins three and two, that means they're three up with two holes to go. The match is called. They win the match, so they're going to get the match one bonus. And then if they didn't lose a hole, they would get the 
the no holes lost bonus. And then again, because they didn't finish those final two holes, they will get 1.6 points for each of those holes, so 3.2 points there as well. Um, we did see some last year, like for instance, Kevin Kistner over Poulter, and I think it was the round of 16, beat him 8-6. and six. Um, didn't lose a hole, so he got all the bonuses. He did have a streak of three. He he didn't lose a hole in the match. So all those six holes he didn't finish, he got those points as well. He won the match, um, and then all the holes won there too. So um, that that that's a domination. And so if you can find a golfer, going back to the bracket here for a second, if you can kind of go through these groups and you feel that you're comfortable that you've got a golfer in one of these groups that you feel he's going to play three matches in that opening round. If you feel you can dominate one or two of those matches and get a lot of those bonuses, you're going to really help yourself in building your lineups. And then the next strategy thing that I really think you need to concentrate on, I think you're doing it wrong if you're not doing it this way, is when you're looking at building your core golfers, you need to look at the regions. So you, one, two, three, four groups here, that's one region. Then four groups down here, that's another region. Four groups here, and then four groups here. The reason I say this is because you want to get your golfers as far as possible. So, for instance, I've got Grio, DeChambeau, Stenson, and Johnson as my final four. Um, when building a core, say I'm doing 50 lineups, I'm probably going to use that core in 10 to 12 lineups. And then I'm going to change my core up a little bit with my bracket and go through. But I want to make sure that my first four golfers in my core come from all four different sections of the bracket that way they don't like for instance if you went with a core of Dustin Johnson and Patrick Reed well sure they could both get out and get some points for you in the group stages but they're going to play each other in the round of 16 right away one of them is going to be eliminated um, so you want to go away from that so then after you've got those four from those different regions what you're going to want to do then is keep your fifth and sixth golfer in your lineup as furthest away from playing that guy as possible so for instance um, my core, let's just say here, Dustin Johnson, Henrik Stenson, because I've got him, Bryson DeChambeau, and Emiliano Grillo. So from there, if I use those four guys in my lineup, which you can easily do, um, and you're going to have to take some risks this week, because if you're going to stack Dustin Johnson and DeChambeau, or Dustin Johnson and Kopka, or, or McElroy and Johnson, or... Um, you know, two of the big names, you're going to need some value. So that's kind of what I did here with Grio and Stenson just coming out of these regions. So after those four guys, to fill in those next two spots in your lineup, um, I would want to, if I'm going to pick a guy up here, I'm going to want to go to these two groups. Not this group because he's going to play Dustin Johnson in the round of 16. But if you pick a guy from this group, he can get out, get those points for you here, win his round of 16, and then he's going to play in the lead eight here. Um, so ROM, for instance, I don't mind if you can fit it in if you want to go value, value, value with three or four spots going ROM uh, and Johnson. It's, it's, that's going to be a little bit contrarian fitting those two in, in the same lineup because they will um, have a chance of facing each other in that Elite Eight and can't get to that Final Four. But that's kind of a decision you have to make depending on what values you end up going with this week. So if I went with um, a guy down here, he's not going to face Dustin Johnson to the Elite Eight. And then for my other golfer, say, um, I would want to go, I would actually go, I would actually say if Bryson and DJ are my favorites, I feel that they're going to make it to the final here. For my fifth and sixth golfer in my DraftKings lineup, for the most part, in most of my lineups, I'm going to want to go to um, this region up here and then this region down here. And then if I've got Stenson here, I'm going to want to go to these bottom two groups here. And because I've got Grio here, I'm going to want to go to these two groups here so that they're going to, you're going to get those guys to the Elite Eight. So theoretically, you could get all four to the Final Four and then the other two guys just eliminated in the Elite Eight. That's going to, for sure, if that happens, you're definitely going to cash no matter what contest you're going to be in and you're going to have a really good shot at winning if you pick the winners and get some of those bonus points like we talked about. Those bonus points are definitely going to be huge in separating yourself because there is no birdies, birdie bonuses, and that sort of thing. So that's kind of how I'm going to go about um, building my bracket or building my DFS lineups on DraftKings this week, not selecting my bracket. Um, I do have some bracket games in play. We're not going to talk about that here. Concentrating on DraftKings for the most part here. So what else I've done? I've got the salaries listed here, as you can see, the win odds to win the whole thing, and this WGC percentage. What that is is I went to Match Play Records, which is from uh, shout out to Adam Sarzen.com. He's got match play records for pretty much every single player on the planet. 
Um, you can go in. So, if, for instance, you can go look at um, let's Dustin Johnson's one of my core plays. So let's just pull him up here. You open up Dustin Johnson's page and go down here. You can see his overall match play record, and I've got this in the sheet, but you can actually see a, a complete breakdown of the matches he's played, what course they played at. So then what I did was I compiled um, all the WGC match play from Austin Country Club, which it has been at this course three years in the past. So on the cheat sheet, on the main page, you're going to see course history. I've only got three years there. So there, there's a ton of match play um, to look at, but it's only been at Austin Country Club for the last three years. This will be the fourth year, so I just kind of wanted to break that down and look at this course specifically, this Pete Dye design, and, and go with that. So that's how I've got that on there. So I've also got their overall record pulled from Adam Sarzen's site, and then also um, the match play record over the last three years at Austin Country Club. I got that on there as well just to see how guys fared. So as you can see, I've also compiled their win percentage and total matches played. So definitely have a look at that. That's definitely going to help your research. Some guys are a lot better than others when it comes to um, playing match play. So you can definitely use that resource to help your research this week. So with that said, um, as you can see, Dustin Johnson is going to be a core play for me here. He's been, you know, dominant at at this event in 2017. Um, he beat Rom in the final. Um, struggled a bit last year, but he's coming in with some good form here, so I'm definitely liking that. Looking at, um, I use FantasyNational.com, excellent resource for all stats. My stats on my sheet, um, just for instance, are going to be 90% this season, so 2018-19 season stats and then mixed in with 10% weight on last season as well, just to, just to grab a little bit bigger of a sample size um, to see you know, when comparing your players. So I also use FantasyNational.com um, to see more of a rolling stats of last 4, 8, 12, 24, 50, 100 rounds, whatever you want to break that down to, and a ton of different stats. You can build a custom model over there as well, and that really works out really well. And another really neat thing, I'm just going to bring it over here right now, is the Austin Country Club Match Play Simulator. Definitely get over and check this out. Um, so I've got John Rom, Dustin Johnson. Very tough decision for me. I'm probably going to be splitting some lineups um, with John. You know, say 60% with Johnson going to the final and 40% with uh, Bryson going to the final. Mix it up that way because that matchup is very tough for me. So what you can do is actually go select Dustin Johnson and John Rom just on the list here and just run simulations. So as you can see, they run their simulations. We've um, you know, you can read about their methodology, how they go about, you know, coming up with the simulator. It's definitely a beta thing, I believe, still. Um, but it gives you a good feel of guys like right now, Dustin Johnson, 57% to win in a head to head scenario, 10% that they're going to have, 32.5% that John Rahm's going to win. So definitely go check that out. Um, it's perfect. But what I'm really looking at this week, I said my going pretty simple, is looking at ball striking. So as you can see, Dustin Johnson's number one in ball striking over the last 24 rounds overall. That's kind of why he's one of my top guys. Emiliano Grillo is also on my list this week. Um, I said you're going to need to go crazy in a couple spots. Maybe not crazy, but he is number two in ball striking over the last 24 rounds. I believe he's number one. Just pull him up here. Just looking at... Uh, Another screen. Yeah, he's number one in opportunities gained right now, number two in strokes gained ball striking, and 28th in birdie or better gain. Um, 6,900 on DraftKings. I can definitely see him coming out of this group. And, you know, I don't think particularly this region is, is the strongest. And when you look at the whole overall scope of the bracket, four golfers in the 10K plus range over here on the left side got Dustin Johnson, Roy McElroy. That could definitely be a matchup in the final. But then you've got John Rahm and Justin Thomas, two beasts there as well. Jason Day just below that at 9,800. You look at this side, you got Justin Rose at 10. He hasn't been great here, hasn't been a great uh, match play player overall. Other big name is Kopka, definitely going to be a favorite this week. you got a tough group here in uh, Finau, Poulter, Kistner, and Mitchell. They all play well, but there's not a lot of high price. Bryson DeChambeau down at 9,500. That's one of the reasons why he's one of my cores, because you can take Bryson and you can pair him with Dustin Johnson, Roy McIlroy, or John Rahm, whoever's your favorite over there on the left side. And you don't really have to take as many risks, um, but one of those risks I do like in the Stars and Scrubs type lineup is Grio. He's going to be low owned. You know, he's burned a lot of people um, a lot of times at high ownership because he always seems to pop in everyone's stats model. You can see he's better, he's better on bent grass when it comes to putting, 
Um, and he's gained strokes on the approach in six of his last seven rounds. So he's got that going for him. Um, and he's gained strokes in seven straight rounds off the tee. Um, so I definitely love that ball strike. And, you know, his issue lately in five of his last six rounds, he's lost over four strokes put in. So if he puts together a good round to round put in, which he did at the players, he gained about one and a half strokes to the field put in. Um, and ended up finishing 26th in that strong field. I think that may be able to translate. He hasn't had success here. Like I said, he's going to be low on punt play for me, but it definitely helps to get a Dustin um, DeChambeau. You could even, you don't even necessarily got to go with Stenson. You could probably even fit Rory in there and just punt another spot. I also like Kistner this week. He was dominant last year. He beat some big names. We're just going to go look at uh, his match play here real quick. Yeah, so last year, he, he started out last year having with Adam Hadwin, then he beat Vern Wiesberger, beat Dustin Johnson, the defending champion, came out of that group, be, group because of that win. Then he went on to beat Kutcher, Poulter, um, absolutely hammered Poulter 8-6 and six in the quarterfinals. Semifinals, he he went to extra holes with Alex Norn, but Alex Norn is one of the best um, players when it comes to the match play. Um, so he beat him as well, and then took... Um, ended up with uh, Bubba Watson winning it uh, in extra holes at the end there. So definitely like Kevin Kistner. Um, he would be, you know, one of those fifth and sixth guys because I do, like I said, I do have Bryson DeChambeau going, but I could see Kevin Kistner and Bryson DeChambeau in that Elite Eight. I think Kistner can come out of that group. It's a very tough group. Uh, group 14 along with group 12. Very, very tough groups. It's another reason why I like Stenson coming out of that group as well, because I think Jason Day and even Phil Mickelson might even be more popular. Jim Furyk's been red hot lately. I think it's a contrarian pick. Um, I think we've got to go contrarian with a couple spots in our lineups, because like guys like Bryson and DJ, that's going to be a pretty chalky um, final pairing there on Sunday for the championship. So taking a couple swings, um, with guys like that coming out of those tough groups, you could definitely find some low ownership, and it helps you build um, lineups with Dustin DeChambeau or or Rory and DJ, or like I said, pairing two of the big names. So that's kind of the strategy I'm going with this week. Um, for more information on specific players, what players you like, maybe just reviewing a lineup for you, make sure to hit me up either on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs nine. Um, in the in the Roto Pros community chat, uh, it's a Slack chat, or the DFSR chat room there as well. Um, available in all three, pretty much 24/7, 365. So with that, thanks for watching the video. Thanks for checking it out. I I hope you build some good brackets this week, uh, some good DFS lineups, and let's go see some green screens. Good luck, everyone.